I want to talk briefly about gear. Now mm -hmm. today, I believe you brought a Yamaha. Yeah, I brought an acoustic guitar. <laughs> Do you know what model of Yamaha you, you rock? Um, it's actually not even mine, it's borrowed. It's my sister's. She doesn't even play it, so I'm like, let me pl get a player guitar. You don't even play it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, 12? Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and my guest. And my guest today is a graduate of Las Vegas Academy of the Arts, uh, considers her music alternative R&B and anti-pop. She's a singer-songwriter who is also a recording artist and an event coordinator, and is from the mean streets of Yakima, Washington. Yay, yes, yay. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Please welcome to the channel, Nidia Martinez. Say hey hi. Hey guys, hello. So, first off, right off the bat, you moved from Washington into Vegas? Yeah, I moved when I was super young. I had no choice. I mean, my parents. <laughs> I was moved. <laughs> I, yeah, I was transplanted with my parents. They moved here. My dad um, got an opportunity here. And honestly, it's been like the best thing that has turned out for my life. Um, I found myself here in Vegas and like full of culture. And like um, at the time when I was growing up, the music scene hadn't really been established. So it's been really nice to see it like being cultivated. It definitely is growing a lot. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of that has to do with things like showcases and open mics, shout out to House of Art. Yeah. Um, but also just people, I think quarantine kind of made people hungry again for live music. Oh, of course, both, yeah. Both making it and and watching it. Um, and I remember those first few shows where you could go again, but with a mask, and yeah. it was packed. It didn't matter what you played. Oh my gosh, I'll never take live music for granted ever again. Right. Now we met at, uh, speaking of House of Art, he, run, uh, he runs the Homegrown Songwriter Showcase, which, um, has recently been at the Strat on Las Vegas Boulevard. We met there. Yes. Uh, not the last one, but the one before that, I believe. Right. Yes. And it is currently on hiatus for Mother's Day and also uh, while well, they, they're figuring out what they want to do with it. But hopefully there'll be more. So Yes, so we hope tuned. so. That was a great venue. It is awesome. And just the whole concept of the Songwriter Showcase is awesome. Sure. Uh, Hal's doing a really good job of, of helping to grow the local scene that he's part of. And, and um, he's, he has me there to live stream it, if you don't know that already. Please consider subscribing, ring the bell down there, and that way you won't miss out on any future live streams or future videos where I also review the, live, the showcases. So, speaking of which, well not speaking of which, but transitioning to other things where you're on stage, kind of, you did a photo shoot with Underground Sin City. Yeah, yeah, so uh, it's actually a magazine that's out of Simi, um, California. Uh, my dad is actually from there, so they it was just kind of an interesting connection. Wait, 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 wait. They call themselves Underground Sin City, or they were doing a Sin City. Yep. As a Sin City edition. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Because I was confused. I was like, what oh the yeah. Heck? So so the name of the magazine is called Underground Magazine, and the edition I was in was called Sin City. Um, so they basically interview like local artists. Um, they had originally done all in California, but mm -hmm. now they branched out to Las Vegas. I think they're doing like Boston next. Um, but it was a really cool experience. I got to. Um, have my magazine spread and then we had a performance too. Do you remember, remember who was in that uh, edition with you? Because yeah, there was a group so, shot too. Yeah, yeah, so we had we had a bunch of different artists. So um, the female artists were it was Karima, also Zelly Vibes, and then myself. Um, and then we also had other rappers as well. Right on. If any of you happen to see this and want to be on the show, hit me up down in the description. Yes. Uh, so the reason I brought that up is what was different about being, having an actual photo shoot and performance versus just showing up and playing? Oh, okay. That's, that's a good question. That's, um, why, that's why I asked it. <laughs> I enjoyed the aspect of the personal touch. I feel like they took a lot of time and consideration to really curate um, how we would like to be presented. And the performance was awesome because of the community that they built around it. They had people come in from California as well. Um, to support the show, so that was a really good aspect. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, and it's also like a very big support group too. They still like and comment on all my stuff, and yeah, it's just it's a really good, right really good time. No, so the performance was here, or the performance was in scene? It was here in Vegas. Oh, right on. Where was it? Mm -hmm. It was on Sahara. I'm not sure the venue's name, but it was like a yeah, a little studio. Oh, right on. Cool. So, I want to talk about a shared history we have. Mm, okay. Former choir kid. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Don't even get me started. I love choir. <laughs> I, I 
I grew up in the Catholic Church. Meh. And <laughs> uh, I, I went the whole nine yards with, you know, an altar boy, and I was confirmed, yeah. and I was choir. And that choir yeah, experience, too. though, uh, combined with a love of dance, kind of started mm. me down the whole performing arts route. Yeah. And I was wondering, uh, hearing your music, there's definitely a little bit of, I can, I, I can hear anyway, I'm like, hey, that's from choir. I hear, I recognize certain things that, that oh you were taught. Yeah, I mean, that's like the foundation of who I am as an artist. I'm classically trained um, at LVA, Las Vegas Academy. Oh, that's right. I forgot about we that definitely, too. We definitely, like, were heavily, it was heavily ingrained in us to do um, choral music. I was always a fan. Like, I just really loved the um, concept of making music collectively, like, with one, like, certain goal in mind. Um, and I'm also a vocal coach right now, so, like, a lot of, my uh, technique is like transferred into others as well. Right on. If someone wants to uh, take lessons with you, I am. Let me know. <laughs> no, how how would they do that? Um, you would go to School of Rock because I, I teach at School of Rock. Oh, do Vegas. you? Yeah, yeah. Which one? The one in Henderson or the both one? Both of them. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'll be including a link down in the description for that. You must. Do you know Lizzie Ott? Yeah. Yes, Lizzie Ott. She's so super busy. She can never come on the show. <laughs> I want you on the show. Come on. Uh, anyway. Um, Vegas is small. It's crazy. <laughs> it's small, but at the same time, I'm constantly like, I don't know this person. I don't know this actor. I don't know You're this actor. Them? Yeah. yeah. That's why I love this channel. Um, we, this next question I'm going to ask you mm -hmm. often when I'm editing gives me a list of like, oh, let's look them up. Earliest musical influences. Oof. This is like one of my favorite questions. Beautiful. What is that artist or genre or, or performance or whatever, what was it that made you say, I want to do that. I want to try making music. Okay, like to start, like yeah. when I was young, earliest. What, the earliest, okay. oh goodness, probably Destiny's Child. Like I was literally singing like Bills when I was like three years old, but as I got older, I, I don't know, my mom is also a singer, my dad does music too, so like I was always heavily influenced by like their um, craft and my mom... Um, listen to like rock and Spanish and um, my dad is like he does hip-hop mm -hmm. so I don't know R&B has always been like a very reoccurring theme my favorite artist of all time is Frank Ocean so like if you are watching this we are gonna do so many collabs together Frank like I got you what are you waiting for you dumb stupid fuck um, not Billy Ocean Frank Frank Ocean yeah that's my guy do you know Billy Ocean mm -mm. the kids today God damn, millennials don't know nothing about Mr. William Motion. I know, but yeah. Get out of my dreams. Hey. And into hey. my car. And that's enough for copyright. All right, cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean's my You're guy. no slouch, Frank. But um, I also love Prince. I love Blood Orange. Paramore. Hey, Paramore. Who doesn't yeah. love Paramore? Yeah, right. That was my first concert. So, I mean, that was like my girl. Ooh, that's a, I should start asking that question. That's a mm -hmm. good question. Anyway. Yeah, so those are my, those are my top Right on. So you had a, a melange of, of influences. It wasn't just, oh, I, you know, I really liked Frank Ocean or I really liked, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a mariachi or Spanish or whatever. It was a, 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 an influence. Podge, podge. Right on. <laughs> um, from there, I wanted to talk about current musical influences. What is it that currently oh, yeah. gets you jazzed and thinking about like writing music or just, you know, what is it? What, what's the bop you put on to, to make you clean the house or whatever? Ooh, okay. I love hyper pop, um, ethereal music. There's this girl named Buzz that's super dope. Also, Remy Wolf, a lot of LA artists. Um, who else? Yeah, I think those are the top two. Harry Styles, fire. I love him. He's great. <laughs> One yeah. Direction isn't a band! Anyway. I, I saw them too. They're cool. Excuse me while I yell at clouds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, no, Harry, Harry Styles, isn't, he's no slouch either, but, um, I, see, again, you just mentioned two acts, uh, Remy and, uh, the first one. Buzz, yeah. Buzz, that I, I'm gonna write that down when I'm editing this, because never heard of them. Oh, yeah, listen to them. They're also, cool. they never heard of me either, so, you know. <laughs> um, cool. I didn't, do, I, I'm, I'm remiss, I missed something. Welcome to the channel. Oh, yeah, cheers. <laughs> Clink. With, the cool mugs. With our branded room six. <laughs> Speaking of branded, you may notice. I got a mission statement. There you go. Back. I love that. Support local music. If you would like to support the channel, which actually supports the scene, because of ways I've talked about in the past, uh, please consider going to room6.shop, pick up some merch. I got all sorts of stuff for the summer. I've got all sorts of stuff for your mornings and for the winter. Uh, it, it will really help out the channel and help out the local scene. I am 
very close to announcing something very exciting where uh, I'm using some of the Room 6 money that's been happening, either Patreon patrons or merch or buying my own CDs. Uh, there's a link for that in the description called you know, Room 6 Social Media where there's different ways you can support the channel. And please definitely subscribe and uh, ring the bell because this I'm excited. I'm excited about this announcement, but I'm waiting until probably middle of June because it's going to happen in July. So oh, yeah. that being the social media thing to do is wait. So moving on. Pitch. Sales pitch over. Moving on. Let's talk show memories. Now, show memories? <laughs> I've only seen you perform at the showcase, Ooh. but you just came from a gig. Yeah. So, are, are you also involved with the band at all, or um, do you have a backing band? I, like, source local musicians as much as I possibly can. She's got a stable of, of them to call. <laughs> yeah, I, all my friends are creatives. Like, I, right I, um... So, regardless if it's just Nidia, Mart Nidia Martinez, which is not nothing, or as a group or whatever, what is your favorite memory from being on stage and something that happened that either oh. was crazy or just, or that was that checks off my little rock star moment or or whatever. My favorite memory on stage would have to be this would like probably go back to like 2016 when I was a senior in high school. Um, I went to Barcelona with my choir and we performed in cathedrals. Um, wow. Yeah, that was just an existential experience. It was just beautiful. Um, it was just, yeah, it was just great. I think that, like I said earlier, like making music collectively with people has always been something that I really love. Um, and just like the acoustics, like, are you kidding me? Well, they're built for choral music. So yeah, yeah you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do in that space. Exactly. You're not in there trying to play punk or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it was, it was a great experience. Um, but other than that, I mean, I love playing every every venue here in Vegas has been really cool. Um, I know like Taverna Castera has been holding a lot of open mics. Um, shout out to Jeff. Shout out, I love Jeff. And You're Nevermore awesome. Productions. You're so cool. Yes. Um, and then also, who else has, has open mics? Like Ninja Karaoke has open mics. Um, Ferguson's Downtowns is super like they're so good about booking local artists. Ninja Karaoke um, has open mics because I walked by there while I was waiting for Taverna Castera show to start, and I was like, oh, it's a Karaoke Club. Yeah, I didn't realize so that it's they also... have, um, the jam was there previously, I'm not sure if they're still there, but they had one like every Wednesday or something like the that. The funk jam? Um, no, it's just called the jam. Right, I thought that was, a uh, funk. Mm, it was, I think it's a different, part. like, the host name is actually jam, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you, okay. They're cool though, they've been really good. Um, but yeah, I, I've I have to check that out. a bad experience here. Put that on the list for, uh, future Josh, put that on the list for venue reviews. Yeah. Right on. Cool. So you actually kind of touched on already on leading from favorite show memory to favorite Vegas venue. Hmm. It's hard to choose nowadays, but what is the one? And this is for you just looking or like looking, looking at music. This is the one for for watching a show or for performing. What is the favorite? One? What is the one that just in your mind is like, man, that, that place really is the best place. Honestly, I like Brooklyn Bowl or um, Ferguson's. Like those are. Yeah. Two I haven't top. heard Ferguson's here, but I've heard Brooklyn Bowl a lot. Mm -hmm. I have yet to be inside that place because every time I think I'm gonna go, something comes up where I can't go to a show for in particular. Right. And every time I'm in the area, I'm like, I'm gonna swing by, private party. Yeah, or it's like it closes during the day. It's like an interesting interval. Right, but... and then quarantine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was surprised it was still open to be honest. But uh, I understand that they have really good fried chicken. Oh. Never had it. Yeah, I had, uh, Kel <laughs> I had Kella T from Dead Money on here. I'm sure, you know Kella? Kella mm -hmm. Bobella? No? Yeah. Okay. She's been on the channel. And she performed there and she was saying how in the green room it was like the waitress came in like it was just another Tuesday pile of the best fried chicken you ever had. Move that p plate of pot over and just put the chicken down. I love that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like Brooklyn Bowl apparently knows what musicians are. Uh, what? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want fried chicken? <laughs> right. But I just thought it was funny. It's just like, let's move the plate of pot over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a plate. Of, I've never been in a green room where there was a plate of pot. Honestly. I mean, I House of House of Blues do. in their green rooms. Have you have you played House of Blues at all? Yeah, I played. I played um the the B, the B side, and I've also played the Foundation room. I was super young. Okay, because down the the big stage downstairs, um, I got to do. Uh, I got to play there. Oh yeah. Three green rooms, each one with a shower. Right? Wow, that's high class. <laughs> well, they got, you know, Snoop Dogg and everybody coming in. Right. And, be and because they have people like Snoop Dogg coming in, at least the one we were in, giant hood in the ceiling to just suck it all out. 
Yeah. Like yeah. I went in and I was like, that's as the they should. biggest <laughs> vent I've ever seen. And, and yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It, but it was, it, the sound, my personal favorite venue to perform at was House of Blues. Number one, it's the cachet of it. Yeah. You know, you're just like, hey, House of Blues, rock star moment, bing. And number two, it's such an elevated stage that you're, you know, if there's a crowd there, you're playing, mm -hmm. it, you feel like you're, you're, you're a rock yeah, god. Yeah, you're on the platform. Mm -hmm. And soundboard out there, sound guy to the left. Nice. You hear everything on stage because you've got two people coordinating and then the lighting. So it really was one of those, I wish I was in the crowd to see myself play moments. Yeah. So, all right. Been there. Been there. So moving on from, we've, we've done um, favorite show memories and we've done also favorite venues. I want to talk briefly about gear. Now mm -hmm. today, I believe you brought a Yamaha. Yeah, I brought an acoustic guitar. <laughs> Do you know what model of Yamaha you, you rock? Um, it's actually not even mine, it's borrowed. It's my sister's. She doesn't even play it, so I'm like, let me pl get a player guitar. You don't even play it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, 12? Anyway, um, so, okay, you don't know that much about that. It, it, it sounds nice, though. Yeah. But I, I saw you at, at the showcase playing a uh, red guitar, I think? I have a pink, a pink guitar. That's right. Yeah, Squire. she's new. Her name's Piora. Right um, but I, I really like, I don't know, my favorite guitar brand is Gibson. One day I will get that. Um, but I've also I always sponsor her. Yeah, please. <laughs> I've always played Fender mm. guitars like Strat Stratocasters. I prefer the Fender body style. So even if it's mm. a silver tone or some other body, or I mean some other uh, manufacturer, I like the way it nestles in. Yeah. Gibson's, you know, the Les Paul body or a Gretsch. To me, there's too much in the way. Yeah. I I've tried a lot of different stuff, and and I always come back to that nice little curve. And the cutaway, mm -hmm. and even my my acoustic I use is a cutaway. It's an Ibanez, but uh, oh, nice. I just I'm with you. I prefer the Fender personally, but Gibson. It's just that, that timbre. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yes. Hey, there's the LBA. <laughs> there's there it is. The timbre. So uh, is that where you learned the runs? What is it? The <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean that's runs. it's just R and B like that. that's my bread and butter. <laughs> Anti pop. <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly like my music kind of I have like one of every genre out right now like as far as singles. Um, so like in creating my next my endeavors, I think I'm gonna really attenuate more to my style and like see what I like because I don't know like I just want to like figure out who I am as an artist, you know? Right on. Those mm -hmm. are big words you used. Yeah. <laughs> uh, real quick. What is the newest single? My newest single is Lonely. It came out in February 22. Cool. Two, two, two. <laughs> uh, cool. I, I will make sure to put links down in the description for her social media so you can go check it out. Um, and um, is it on, what is it on? Uh, Bandcamp? Everything. It's, it's on everything. Yeah. Okay. All platforms. Right on. So, we're almost done. Two more questions. Okay. You made it. Yay. Let's so, go. number one, I want to talk about what do you think is the most important thing to, to, to realize when you're a new musician? You know, if you were giving advice to a new musician, what is the one thing you wish someone had told you? And don't say change your strings. I would say be authentic. I'm so big on being yourself because, like, I found myself, like, trying to advert to like different ways of or different methods um even within like my sounds and um trying to like follow trends and stuff so i just think like all good music is good music like personally i, I listen to every kind of style of music um so if you're genuine with who you are and you're authentic like the right people will find you the target audience will find you and like also people remember how you make them feel and not what you say, you know? So I try to just be like very loving um, and just myself, yeah. <laughs> You've had some mentors. You've had some good people, good advice. I, I, have, I have great parents, yes. honestly. <laughs> and, and you can tell you have a, at least one musician for a parent, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, that, that is so true. There was nothing harder than finding your own sound when you're influenced by so many other sounds. Mm -hmm. And I listen to my earliest stuff, I'm like, oh God, that was my Pearl Jam phase, or that was my, you know, mm -hmm. I was I was trying to sound like somebody else. Whether you realize it or not, That's you're true. influenced and you can't help it. Mm -hmm. That being said, you have two options. You can lean into it, or you can try to be fake and try to sound completely different. And I'm here to Perfect. tell you, uh, yeah. all music is thievery, all art is thievery, it's all been done before. 
all you're doing is putting your own personal spin on it. And if when you find something that feels, you're gonna know, you're gonna feel, it's gonna feel right. Yeah. You'll be like, yes, I really like, I, I'm glad I wrote this. I'm glad I, I figured this out because this is who I, I think I am. And it's gonna evolve, don't be afraid. So many times you see bands that are, they got big for some song. And then 20 years later, they're still playing that song. But you can tell they're kind of like over it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Don't be afraid to evolve um, and, and basically change who you are. The rest of the world can figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I especially enjoy when, uh, I'm, I'm not one of these diehard, like uh, Metallica. They, they reinvented themselves, yeah. their sound and everything. Other bands have done that and other acts have done that. I'm not one of these people that's like, no, man, their, young, their earlier stuff was better. I'm like, no, it's different. It is, yeah, exactly. You, you know, have and, to be okay with progressing and changing. Right. Uh, never discount the effect of nostalgia. Yeah, that's true. Because, yeah, I mean, I find myself too. I there are t there are certain old songs by artists that I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't turn the channel on the radio when it comes on. And then there's some newer stuff by artists where I'm like, nah, swipe, swipe, yeah. swipe left. Uh, wait, is it swipe left or swipe right? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I've been married for 20 years, so I don't remember. I don't. This is all new to me. Anyway, um, last question. What? Is the one thing you would like to change about the Las Vegas music scene? Hmm. Pull up punches. The one thing I would like to change about the Las Vegas music scene, honestly, I think it's already changing because I feel like in the past, like when I was first starting out, people were very like secluded to their own groups of people, like in different niches, mm -hmm. but like this new wave of artists um, are, are very supportive and loving of each other. So I feel like it's almost changing itself, you know? Um, so yeah, I think that it's just working itself out. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Well spoken. Thank you for coming Cheers. on the show. Cheers. Thank you so much for having me. This has been awesome. <laughs> no worries. Stick around. We're going to see young Nilia upstairs in room six performing a couple songs at Very least. Nice. and. Definitely, definitely make sure that you click the links down in the description, follow her on social media, uh, buy her songs. Please. <laughs> yes. In the meantime, we're going to temporarily say goodbye. Goodbye. See ya. Hi, my name is Nidia Martinez. I am a singer and songwriter from Las Vegas, and the first song I will be performing is called Please.
I'm stuck inside my mind, but there go belief that till you pull me through, you pull me through. So please wait for me. Please help me to see what you see. Please wait for me. Please help me to believe in me. Please wait for me. Please wait for me. Please wait for me. Please, please. This next song is called We Will Find Out. This next song is called Inhale, Exhale. Um, just a everyday reminder um, to just keep pushing forward. At times I find myself pacing back and forth. Thank you. 
this next song is called Give Myself Away. So I give myself away. I give myself away. Hoping for something change, but we remain the same. I give myself away. Give myself away. I wish that. Short of nothing, I aggravate my being when I let you inside of me. What was I to think we could be anything more than a casual flame? So I I want to thank Nadia Martinez for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to be on the channel, please consider hitting me up in the description, either my email address or the social media links. Tons of ways you can get a hold of me. Come on, we'll have a good time. Number two, if you want to support the channel, hit that social media link down in the description and maybe buy some merch at room6.shop. Become a Patreon patron. I've got patron-only content. Uh, or how about buy one of my CDs? I made them. You might as well. Um, in the meantime... If you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe, it would really mean the world to me. Please click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye. Bye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.